Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg, this is Mr. Bond, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're gonna do a full review of Phoebus Eagle Ray Bronze. Over the time I've had this channel, I reviewed many different Phoebus models and of course you can find all those reviews on the channel. Until now, my favorite watch from Phoebus was Phoebus Eagle Ray. A watch that I reviewed, uh, I think like a year ago or so, that watch was done in stainless steel. Well, today we're gonna review the cousin or the brother of that watch in bronze. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that I prefer stainless steel watches over bronze watches. However, the story is different with this one. I prefer the bronze model over the stainless steel one. Uh, one last thing to get out of the way before we get started with the review is the fact that this watch was sent to me by Phoebus for the review and I don't have to return it. Of course, that's not gonna affect the review in any way, just wanna be transparent. Now, let's get started with the review. Let's start the review, as always, by looking at the case dimensions. The watch has a 41 millimeter case diameter. It's 46 millimeters from one lug to another. It has a 20 millimeter lug width, and it's 14.3 millimeters thick. Here's what the watch looks like on my seven and a half inch wrist. The watch is comfortable for the most part. It fits well. The weight on the watch is 117 grams. So no real complaints with the fit, except for it is a bit um, tall on the wrist. So keep that in mind if you're into slimmer watches. Today's review is gonna be pretty simple and easy to do. Because sometimes I review a watch and I have a lot to say, a lot of things that I wanna change about the watch, a lot of negatives, so to speak. So there's a lot to say. This watch right here is good. It's better than good, it's really good. So there's not much to complain about. Let me put it this way. When I reviewed the Phoebus Eagle Ray, I had a few different complaints about the watch and let's go over those complaints. Uh, first complaint was the fact that the watch is not on a stainless steel bracelet. Now, if the Phoebus Eagle Ray stainless steel watch was on a stainless steel bracelet, I would prefer that watch over this because I just prefer watches on bracelets. However, because it's not on a bracelet, I prefer this bronze one because they fixed a few uh, complaints that I had with the watch. One of the big complaints that I had in the review, and of course, feel free to watch the review, is the fact that the crown was a bit undersized for the watch. Uh, it wasn't too difficult to operate the movement, but uh, it was undersized. Well, they fixed that. They made the crown a little bit larger. It's not digging into the wrist when you wear the watch. That issue was fixed with this uh, bronze version. The second uh, complaint, not really complaint that I had was the price. And I mean, of course, things could always be cheaper because that watch I believe was, uh, I think 350 bucks, $360. And it only had a uh, Miyota uh, nine series movement. Great movement, high beat movement. However, at $350, there's quite a bit of competition even in diver watch space. Well, this watch right here has the Slita SW200. Uh, much better movement, of course, Swiss made, beats at 28,800 beats per hour, uh, has uh, 38 hours of power reserve, 26 joules, hacking, hand winding. This one here beats very accurately, I'm getting within five seconds per day. The other difference between the two watches, the stainless steel model and this bronze version, is the fact that this watch here has higher water resistance. So now it has 500 meters of water resistance as opposed to measly 300 meters on the stainless steel version. I don't know who asked for it, but we got it. I would prefer the watch to become a little bit slimmer. So maybe make this one 13 millimeters, maybe 12 and a half millimeters. We know that Celita SW200 movements are slim, so they would allow for a smaller case. Uh, decrease the water resistance to 200 meters, 300 meters if possible, but shave off a few millimeters in terms of the thickness. As it stands right now, uh, that's kind of a negative for me, the fact that it is a bit thick at 14.3 millimeters. The build quality on the watch is great. It has this bronze case with a bronze bezel. I should mention that the watch is available in a few different color combinations. My favorite actually is not the one that they sent me. My favorite is the one with the ceramic black bezel and a black dial. I think that one looks awesome. This uh, bronze bezel version looks good as well. It's just, uh, I don't know, uh, too much bronze for my liking. The finish on the watch is good. I mean, for bronze type watches, the finish is not all that important and it's actually pretty difficult to do a good finish because bronze will patina over time. And I think that's the big selling feature of bronze watches. 
The case bag features this octopus, the Phoebus logo. They always do a good job with their case bags. It is in stainless steel, so the two metals don't fuse together. If it was bronze, uh, of course, you run the risk if you swim with the watch that uh, the case back and the uh, case will fuse together. On the front, we have this unidirectional 120 click uh, bronze bezel. The bezel action is excellent. Take a listen. It sounds great. No backplate whatsoever. I really enjoy turning this bezel. It has kind of this uh, saw pattern on it, kind of these teeth that make it easier to turn. Quite enjoy that. It has this giant loom pip. Not sure how I feel about it. Not my cup of tea. I wish it was smaller. It's a little bit too giant. Uh, the dial, well done. It's deep black dial with the gilt uh, chapter ring, gilt writing, and gilt octopus logo or Phoebus logo. Now this Phoebus logo has been kind of a subject of some discussion. Some people like it. Some people really hate the fact that it has Phoebus logo on uh, on the dial, the 12 o'clock position. They would prefer the word Phoebus written across the dial. Uh, I don't mind it. I mentioned this in many different reviews. I think it looks kind of funky. It makes the watch seem like it's not really taking itself too seriously. At the six o'clock position, we have a date window. The date window wheel does match the color of the dial. So I think that looks pretty good. We also have automatic and 500 meters of water resistance written by the six o'clock position. The set of hands that they chose are these kind of syringe style hands. The second hand has a lollipop on it. If you really look at the macro shots, you can see that there are some rough edges around the hands. So they're not as refined as you, what you would find in a higher end watch. So maybe something for Phoebus to consider for future iterations of this watch. Maybe pay a little bit more attention to those hands. Uh, the loom is good. Here's a loom shot on the screen for you. I think by this point we expect Phoebus watches to have good loom. The packaging on the watch is very familiar to us. It comes in this uh, carrying case with uh, two different uh, strap options, actually three in total. So we have two leather straps, one black leather strap, one tan or brown leather strap, and one a Tropic rubber strap. I have mine on the Tropic rubber. I think diver watches belong on a rubber strap or like a NATO strap, something functional. Nevertheless, you still have two different uh, strap options. It also comes with a pin removal tool. So that's pretty cool. That's the review of Phoebus Eagle Ray Bronze. As I said, it's a pretty simple review because the watch is good. I mean, there's not much to say. Now, in terms of the pricing, it's priced at 420 US dollars. It's an okay price. I think uh, it's probably better than okay. I think it's a good price for this type of watch. You get the bronze case, uh, domed sapphire crystal, uh, 500 meters of water resistance, and of course, Silita SW200 movement. So all of that is great value for money. Now, it's not a cheap watch by any means. So spending like 400 bucks on a watch, you really have to think about whether you really need this watch in your collection. But if you are looking for a bronze diver, uh, that's below $500. I think this one here is a strong contender. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want. That helps out quite a bit. And of course, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this Phoebus Eagle Ray Bronze. Do you have any Phoebus watches in your collection? Are you picking this one up? Are you letting this one go? Leave all those thoughts below. Of course, I always enjoy reading your comments. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing my Omega Speedmaster Automatic. At their full review of this watch, that video can be found on the channel. I will also link it in the description below. Also in the description below, there is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.